meets girl. They decide to get married, two or three wedding functions, and there you go. Well, not anymore. Indian weddings are getting bigger and crazier. Hello and welcome to Wedding Trends, a bandbaja.com initiative in association with Fab India. If you are getting married or love weddings just as much as we do, you are hooked on to the right show. We are going to be the dhol to your tasha, the beat to your bhangra and the cherry on your wedding cake. Now before we move on any further, let's check out the latest wedding trend this season. Statue. Welcome back to Wedding Trends, a bandbaja.com initiative in association with Fab India. Now that your jewellery is sorted, it's time to move on to the wedding outfit. Now boys, don't feel bad, aapka number bhi aega, but ladies first. And that applies everywhere. So girls, take out your notebooks because this is what's trending for the hip new age bride. Hi, my name is Ankita Chaudhary and my label is Saj by Ankita. The bride is now very independent. Uh, she knows what she wants. The trends are changing, the brides are changing, they're becoming modern, they're becoming aware. There are brides who come who are very bold and very, you know, eclectic. So they come, they, wa they don't want a traditional red and gold. They would want to experiment with the colors, oranges, fuchsias, even lime greens. And over that, they will have like a traditional kind of embroidery or even modern. Another trend that's doing really well is high-waisted stuff. So uh, you can do like high-waisted uh, skirts with crop tops. It's a complete perfect look for a sangeet or even a cocktail, depending on how you accessorize it. You want like multi-color embroidery happening on it with like double dupattas and different colors and blouses which are becoming off shoulders and not like the not fully covered and not fully blocked and opaque. In terms of silhouettes, they want to uh, try more options that they can have fun in. Uh, for their own Sangeet, their Mehndi, they want to have more options where they feel more free to dance around. For Mehndi functions or Sangeet functions, girls are wearing Ghagras. Ghagra style skirts with corsets or even if they team it up with Churidars, that, that look is very unique these days. People are opting for subtle embroideries, uh, minimalistic stuff that, is, that doesn't overpower the wearer of the personality. Fusion outfits like sari gowns and that is again really, really big and every bride wants it now. It's like an amalgamation of a bunch of styles. It's a gown, it's a sari and yet it's extremely Indian. Woven saris are coming back in a big way. Uh, people are opting for Banarasi brocades, they're opting for hand-woven saris. So uh, a well-traveled bride, in one function she wants to do the traditional hand-woven sari and in the other one she wants to do a really fun lehenga. One of those embroidery styles and one of those great traditions is the Gota Patti artwork. Gota Patti is so versatile, like from the traditional Rajwada style Gota Pattis to the Zero Patti Gota Pattis which is uh, in right now. There is just such a huge variety of it that it can be a very, very timeless piece. It can be something that you wear for your wedding and your granddaughters will see it and they will say that yes, they would want to wear it too. For every bride, I would say, is a gold well-fitted blouse. You don't know when you'll need it at the wedding. 
whether it is for your haldi or a small affair or a puja or anything. The modern girl out there who really did not grow up trying to pleat in sarees and trying to figure out how everything falls in together has got to be the pre-draped priested saree. And it is just so convenient to wear it. It just zips up like a skirt, you take a palla and you've got nothing to worry about. Do a three-quarter sleeve blouse in case you're conscious with your arms. Do a heavy volume lehenga in case you want to make uh, your top part look less heavy. You can do a drape, a very interesting drape with an embroidered belt, high waist, so that it hides away all your conscious areas. You can go about wearing, you know, outfits which would show, which would highlight your good parts. It's like your collarbones or a thin waist or like a curvy body. It's great out there. So don't, you know, worry that you're not looking like that type of a bride or this type of a bride. You would look like you kind of a bride. So accept yourself, wear it with confidence because that confidence and that confident smile and that contentment is the glow that every bride needs at her wedding day. We cannot end this topic without talking about the wedding fashion biggies. We spoke to the ever so graceful Anju Modi and the king of bling, Rohit Bal. A lot of girls want to wear saris, especially for the reception, but with very sexy blouses, light, light work and you know, kind of something that allows them to enjoy their own wedding. So lehenga for the mehendi, she needs to dance happily and uh, the bridal day I will still recommend lehenga in our very Rajasthani Jodhpuri Choli and uh, Pull the Patta, Mang Tika, all works. The options for a winter bride, um, there's lots of things that winter brides can wear. Uh, my personal favourite actually is, is velvet, I think velvet looks absolutely beautiful. It's very luxurious. I love the feeling of velvet, I love the colours, the colours should, I have my favourite colours which are, which are like Bordeaux, you know like a deep wine, I love indigo. Bride should be very careful what she carries for her destination wedding and the destination is the deciding factor. So for a beach wedding I think much something very light, lighter colours, lighter fabrics, you know lots of uh, maybe uh, organic, you know, cool. I'm talking about fabrics like, you know, lightweight chanderis, you know, malmal. Malmal is my favorite, so I would love to do a beautiful malmal outfit. Cut works are also nice. Keep it easy, keep it light, keep it feminine, keep it pretty. Depends again totally where she is going. If she's going to Udaipur, Jodhpur, then she can go all out with her brocades and heavy ensembles, very royal looking. <laughs> The faux pas which they should avoid while they are getting dressed for the D-Day is to not put too much of makeup. I think the one fashion trend I don't get is all these people wearing these, these bags uh, that uh, don't go with what they're wearing. They're wearing night bags during the day, they're wearing day bags during the night. So please be careful with the bags and the accessories you wear. They look so very beautiful but the very day sometimes they happen to do over makeup which takes away that innocence, that young look, that your real look away from you.